In the haunting month of May 1933, a cataclysmic tragedy unfolded on a desolate Siberian island known forevermore as the Zeno Island. The appalling events that transpired during this period would etch themselves indelibly into the annals of history, leaving an indescribable scar on the collective conscience. It was on this forsaken isle that thousands of Soviet prisoners were callously exiled, stripped of any tools, supplies, or knowledge, and left to their own devices. These unfortunate souls were coerced into settling on Nazino Island, ostensibly to establish a new type of gulag where they were to cultivate crops for the benefit of the state. However, this grand experiment quickly spiraled into a heart-rending disaster, as multitudes perished not merely due to exposure to the brutal cold or diseases, but at the merciless hands of their fellow captives, who saw desperation as an opportunity for savagery even resorting to cannibalism to survive. By the tumultuous year of 1929, Joseph Stalin had firmly established himself as the omnipotent leader of the Soviet Union. Imposing his iron will on the nation through policies that reverberated with dread and suffering. One such policy was the infamous collectivization. A far-reaching endeavor aimed at wresting control of agricultural production from the hands of individual farmers and landowners and firmly placing it under the aegis of the state. However, this grand vision came at a terrible cost. The implementation of collectivization involved the heartless seizure of property, produce, and land, while those deemed kalaks, the more prosperous and successful farmers and landowners faced heinous dehumanization and persecution. Yet, even in the face of this harrowing human tragedy, opposition to collectivization was not extinguished. Defying the ruthless regime, numerous individuals voiced dissent and resistance, leading to a torrent of arrests and mass imprisonment in the dreaded Gulag work camps. Unfortunately, despite these draconian measures, Food shortages persisted and desperation grew to unfathomable levels. It was in this dire context that, in March of 1933, Jenrik Yagoda, a high-ranking Soviet official, proposed what some might perceive as a radical solution. Instead of consigning farmers and agricultural workers to the oppressive labor of the gulags, Yagoda advocated for the establishment of prison camps where food could be grown. This audacious plan almost bordering on the absurd, was set into motion even before receiving official approval from the enigmatic Stalin and the powerful political bureau. With breathtaking swiftness, thousands of individuals were abruptly rounded up, hastily exiled to the remote and inhospitable lands of Siberia. Embarking on a treacherous journey, the prisoners were loaded onto barges and transported down the unforgiving river orb until they finally reached the forlorn and desolate shores of Nazino Island. Tragically, around 30 of the prisoners succumbed to the elements and their dire conditions during this perilous voyage. Greeted by the stark reality of Nazino Island, the prisoners were met with a chilling and desolate landscape. This frozen marshy swamp, devoid of vegetation and devoid of hope, offer no respite to the beleaguered prisoners. Stripped of tools, shelter, and proper clothing, these unfortunate souls were left to fend for themselves amidst the unforgiving wilderness. Most prisoners still donned the same tattered garments in which they were arrested, their thin protection no match for the harsh climate. Scavenging for anything remotely edible became their ceaseless quest, but hunger, disease, and violence whether meted out by the callous guards or perpetrated by fellow captives, became their relentless adversaries. As days turned into weeks, and the weeks blurred into months, the camp descended into an abyss of chaos and despair. With hunger gnawing at their insides and desperation clouding their judgment, some prisoners succumbed to the unthinkable act of cannibalism in a desperate bid for survival. The guards, themselves agents of cruelty and torment, reveled in the prisoners' suffering, amplifying the horror that had gripped the island. Gangs formed, seizing control of the limited resources, extorting the vulnerable, and resorting to violence against those who were weaker. The situation grew increasingly dire, and as the first month drew to a close since the prisoners' arrival on Nazino Island, 
the authorities were forced to acknowledge the monumental failure of their grand experiment. The camp was promptly closed, and what remained of the prisoners was left scarred physically and emotionally, bearing witness to the unspeakable horrors they had endured. In the aftermath of the calamity on Nazino Island, the true extent of the atrocities might have remained buried in the archives of the Soviet Union had it not been for the indefatigable efforts of one man, the silly Velichko. A local-level Soviet official, Velichko heard whispers and rumors of the harrowing events on the Zeno Island from the local populace. Fueled by a sense of duty and compassion, he took it upon himself to investigate these dark tales. The horrors of Cannibal Island, while often overshadowed by the broader suffering endured under Stalinist rule, serve as an agonizing reminder of the depths to which humanity can sink in the face of unimaginable adversity. The cruelty, hopelessness, and desperation that drove people to resort to cannibalism remain haunting reminders of one of the darkest chapters in Soviet history. In many ways, Nazino Island stands as a somber testament to the lengths to which individuals will go to survive in the face of insurmountable odds. Even if it means delving into the darkest corners of the human psyche.